At this conference, you've heard the terms mentoring, education, and dreaming. But as we dream, I want us to think about how we take ourselves outside of a dream. And I'm going to start off with this quote by a poet, a writer, and an essayist by the name of Rabindranath Tagore. You cannot cross the sea merely by standing and staring at the water. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Joshua Murphy, the Vice Chairman of Operations for the 100 Black Men of America. It is my pleasure to serve as your host this morning. Welcome to the State of the 100 Breakfast. We have a great program for you this morning, including recognition of some of the best practices within our chapter network. We will also see the video highlights of the work that we do and hear from our chairman on his view of the state of the organization. So to get things going, here is our chairman, none other than Curly M. Dosman, Jr. Mr. Chairman. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, Dr. Murphy, I appreciate the introduction. And I wanna thank all of you for what you do, especially uh, as our Vice Chair of Operations. It's great to be here this morning. Uh, I hope that many of you were able to attend the daily fitness activity with Dr. Tommy Smith and Donna Richardson Joyner this morning. Remember, even though our theme isn't health and wellness this year, we do have to take care of our health. We want to make sure we role model and teach our youth and the communities that we serve, and we need to be healthy to make that happen. Again, welcome to the State of the 100 Breakfast. I can't think of a better way to begin than to recognize some leaders within our organization who exemplify what we stand for and what we do. Uh, the first will be the Wimley Award, which is named after the late Bill Wimley, a president of the 100th New Jersey chapter, and he was a vice president of the 100 Black Men of America Incorporated. Uh, this award honors a member who has demonstrated a unique commitment to volunteerism and to mentoring our youth. It is an award that identifies members who reflect the kind of life uh, that Dr. Wimley, Bill Wimley lived. And the Wimley Award for this year, and I hope he's in the room, I know I saw him early and I need to bring him forward. Also, by the way, these people don't know these awards are being given, so that's why I'm a little hesitant to make sure they're here. But let's see, I think uh, the first one that I want to recognize, though I talked to you about them yesterday, and that's Stan Savage. Stan? Are you in the room? Come on up, Stan. He's coming around. As Stan is coming. <laughs> Stan has an unquestionable commitment to the 100's mission and cause. He has exhibited exceptional volunteerism coupled with a servant's heart and grace on the fire. His proven leadership in youth mentoring is a demonstration of that. And Stan has been the head of our security uh, for all of these conferences, both struggling with our youth as well as our adults. And some of us have given him a great deal of challenge over the years, uh, but he's handled it with grace and with uh, 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 demeanor. And uh, I think his number of years of service as a police officer has served him well in that regard. But more important than that, I've witnessed Stan as he's become the chapter president of the South Metro chapter uh, in the last few years, and he's done a yeoman's job in that role as well. So Stan, on behalf of your fellow members and the executive committee, I'm delighted to appreciate and show you the appreciation by awarding you this Wimley Award. So 
I, I tell you, these guys got me speech. I can't write a poem or anything. <laughs> but, uh, but seriously, um, I mean, it, it's not about me. Uh, I just accept this award in honor of my late son, Jordan Savage, who uh, was just, I mean, I learned so much from him. He was just so courageous. But I'm used to being around courageous people uh, like many of you. Um, I wrote a epitaph for Jordan, and I remember reading where a writer uh, wants to find courage. Uh, that courage is not defined by those who fought and never fail, uh, but courage is defined by those who fought, fell, and rose again. And that is exemplary of what so many of you guys do in our communities with our youth. Uh, I love you. I appreciate it. I'm humble. And I'm surprised because most of the time these brothers can't keep a secret. So, <laughs> uh, but again, thanks so much. May God bless you. Our next award is the Knight Award, and it's named for Leonard Knight, a former president of the Phoenix Chapter and the creator of the 100s Leadership Institute. The award recognizes a member who has demonstrated a strong commitment to leadership within the organization. And the Knight Award for 2014 goes to Vernon Durden, 100 black men of greater Beaumont. As I mentioned, Vernon is a founding member of, the, of that chapter and has demonstrated an unwavering commitment to developing and growing leaders within the 100. And as chair of one of our key committees, he has brought leadership and expertise, and he's even breathed life into it. So please give another hand to Vernon Durden as our Knight Award winner. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this, this is really a total surprise. Uh, I, think, I think the chairman saw me getting weak, so this, I guess this is fuel to keep me going. <laughs> but really the fuel is the work that I see all of you doing. I'm inspired when I come to these conferences and, and hear of the work that the many chapters are doing and see the young people. When I come and see the young people, hear them and talk to them and engage them, and hear of their dreams and aspirations and how you are saying that those dreams and aspirations are being fulfilled through your mentorship. It's really a blessing to be able to serve. Thank you for this award, Mr. Chairman. At this time, I'm gonna ask our, our Vice Chair Marvin Dickerson if he'll come forward and uh, recognize some of our sponsors. Marvin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. No conference or event of this stature could be held without the help of sponsors. And we have some outstanding ones. I'm going to introduce a group of them and their representatives and ask them to come to the podium and greet us in the order I call them. Please hold your applause until I announce them all. First representing Aetna is Ms. Laurel Levy. She is the regional, Southeast Regional Director, Community Relations. Next will be Al Tucker, Vice President of Multicultural Affairs for Greater Fort Lauderdale Convention and Vis Visitors Bureau. Next will be Bruce Chilumina, the <laughs> I always have to remember uh, Bruce's uh, last name. He's the base director for Detroit Metro Airport in-flight services representing Delta Airlines. Representing Prudential is Ms. Gail Britton. She's the vice president of diversity and inclusion. And finally, I believe one of our guests is still stuck on a plane, Alex D Dijon, representing AT&T. If he doesn't make it in here in time, I'll give remarks at the end on behalf of AT&T. So please come forward in that order.
Good morning, Good morning. Mr. Chairman, Executive Leadership, President Brown, staff, guests, and members of the 100. I bring your greetings on behalf of Aetna. We are so proud to say that for over a decade we have partnered with you along on this journey, because it is a journey, it's not a destination, to help improve the lives of our youth. I want to thank um, Tommy Smith and his team for working out with us in the morning. Definitely give a shout out to the South Bend, Indiana president and his team who were the first to arrive for the last two days at the workout session. Yes, South Bend. Congratulations on a wonderful 28th annual conference. I wish you all the best, and we look forward to continuing with you on this partnership. God bless you. Good morning. On behalf of Greater Fort Lauderdale Convention and Visitors Bureau in Broward County, we'd like to welcome all of our out-of-town guests that are here. We hope that your stay is not only a beautiful stay, but you have what I call a sunshiny state of mind. Um, our whole presence here really is about our sunshine, our beaches, but most importantly, what today is about is about our people. And I see many young people here today, and we know that this conference and the educational element of what this conference brings is about those young people. As a sponsor, writing a check is very easy, but what really takes the time to serve these young people is what's so important. So on behalf of our local chapter, Greater Fort Lauderdale Convention and Visitors Bureau, those that are here in the room, we thank you so much. And when you look at your title, education in an era of change, I want to thank the 100 from a national perspective because what has happened here locally has really transformed our young people to see bigger and better things. We are very fortunate here to have not only a superintendent of color running the uh, school system, but also a, a teacher, or I should say a um, dean of the School of Business at Nova Southeastern University. And because of this conference coming here, we've been able to put them together to really give our young people the best opportunity for education all the way from elementary through high school. So again, on behalf of our destination, the Board of Directors, we thank you so much for 100. Local chapter, keep doing what you need to do, and welcome. Good morning. Um, I can tell you the gentleman from AT&T was not on Delta Airlines, because had, <laughs> had he been on Delta Airlines, he would have been on time. Um, so, you know, that kind of tells you that when you travel, definitely there's a reason why the 100 black men are associated with Delta Airlines. So, it, it is indeed a pleasure. Uh, thank you. It is indeed a pleasure to be here uh, representing 80,000 uh, plus employees of Delta Airlines worldwide. And of course, uh, some of my peers who are sitting on that table, we are very proud of the relationship that we have with 100 black men um, of America. We believe that it takes a village, and uh, being an African, when I say it takes a village, I actually mean that. Um, you know, because you cannot do things on your own, and we believe as an organization, we have to be active in the communities we serve. So Delta Airlines just, you know, believes that you can put nice videos out there that says you're involved in your community, but you have to put resources behind, and that's why we believe the relationship we have with 100 Black Men is about making this place a better place. So we are very proud to be here, looking forward to the next couple of days. Um, I told my boss, I said, somebody must like me to bring me back again for the second year. <laughs> so thank you so much for everything, and being an on-time airline, I'll stop right here and have a lovely conference. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Chairman Dossman, Chairman Emeritus, Dodson, Deutsch, and Chairman Gladston, Goldston. So now I've lost my D joke, so. Um, <laughs> he changed his name. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I am struck by um, how no one has mentioned the game yet. Uh, uh, really? 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 <laughs> And it's really awful of me to do that because I know nothing about basketball. But I do know that the Heat lost. Uh, look over there. <laughs> I'm just saying. I know nothing about basketball. My sport is shopping. 
But even on the news this morning, they were talking about how they lost and the comeback looks bleak, but let me get on with my other remarks. It's so good to be here with all of my fellow sponsors to celebrate and chart the course forward. You've been doing this for 28 years as a national organization. And the commitment that the 100 demonstrates day in and day out to our youth, to our community, to our nation, and to the world. We know that the 100 mentors 100,000 children, but I dare say that that's the baseline, that every one of those kids has an impact on their sisters, on their brothers, on their aunts, their uncles, their classmates. So that number grows exponentially. So I am so happy to stand here before you marking 15 years that we have been sponsoring this organization. And I pledge to you that if you keep doing this work, we'll keep doing our work. Enjoy the conference and thank you. Thank you, uh, our partners, for those uh, remarks. Bruce, uh, you're correct, AT&T was not on Delta. Um, but since Alex is not here right now, we just want to publicly thank AT&T for their years of support, of supporting our mentoring effort and supporting our annual conference and training work that we do around the country. Uh, they've been a long-standing partner, a great partner to work with. Uh, Mr. Chairman, before I sit down, um, Gail, you talk about the heat, and we do have this thing called shared value, and it's always good when our partners are in line with the 100. And in the spirit of that, you know, I brought Al a representative of, and for those of you that weren't there yesterday, uh, <laughs> when Dennis talked about all that sun that was going to come out, I didn't see any sun. I saw a lot of rain. And so, Al, I'm going to leave you this umbrella. I'm not opening it because I'm old school, and you don't open an umbrella in the house. But we'll leave that with Al, so no problem. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Al. I, I know that there'll be an opportunity. Uh, I would like to give you the mic. I know you usually like to get it last if you want to respond. <laughs> I don't have prepared remarks, but I, I will say, Gail, we really appreciate all of your support of the 100. But when you don't support me, we got a bigger problem. And Marvin, you know how I feel about you. Not at all. Let me add my personal thanks to each of our sponsors for your continued support, and it really uh, is greatly appreciated. Uh, and every one of you bring uh, a value add uh, to the organization in each respect you have, and we hopefully that you found this partnership to be as mutually beneficial as we have seen it to be. And so I appreciate what we've done, and especially uh, with at and former uh, I was a former employee. They stayed with us since uh, the time I was there and even after I left. Delta, you've been a homegrown partner for us in the hometown, and we appreciate that. Aetna, you know, we've seen working. In fact, the person I'm about to introduce next was in participating in our health uh, running fair this morning. And I think I am going to be the first one or the second person with Prudential. As you know, they've, they are uh, launching a planned giving campaign for the organization. Uh, and I've been trying to get my health ready before I do the exam, so make sure that I qualify for the life insurance policy that we're going to get done. But at this time, um, I have one other uh, surprise award that we want to mention, and, and uh, it's named after Dr. James Black. It's, uh, and he was a past president, a national chairman of our Health and Wellness Committee, and a member at large, and a past president of the 100 Black Men of Los Angeles. And he's also a life member of the 100 Black Men of America. And this year's winner of the Dr. James T. Black Award is Dr. Romeo Stockett of the 100 Black Men of DeKalb. 
And I had to hold off on that because Dr. Stockett was participating in the run walk this morning, and he was just uh, recovering from the shower, and I think he's finally made it into the room. So Dr. Stockett, would you come forward, please? <laughs> Dr. Stockett is a real champion and advocate for our health and wellness initiatives and serves as a dedicated co-chair of our international committee. He is a brilliant researcher and health professional who embodies the spirit of what Dr. James T. Black stood for, to improve the quality of life for African Americans. So please show again your appreciation to Dr. Romeo Stockett. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rochelle. She's the reason that everybody thinks I'm so smart. <laughs> Let's be clear about that. And thank all of you, and especially thank our support systems that enable us to do what we are called to do. So thanks to all of the wives and children and families and understanding bosses and every, every, everything. I just had one comment. Uh, it just keeps keeping me pumped. We had a meeting the other night, Wednesday night. It was a health care committee, and we had invited some of the noteworthy, outstanding clinicians uh, in this nation to have a conversation, and it was absolutely incredible. I left that meeting so pumped, and with a new understanding of what the 100 black men of America is all about. All of our history has been cultivating and developing our leadership brand, and now it has actually happened that we are not aspiring for standards or building standards. We are there and we are setting standards. And in the area of health care, with the last two or three years in the initiative in which the 100 black men of America has said, we determine, we have determined what the health issues are. We have determined the path to take to address them. And we have absolutely taken the lead. And the rest of the nation will follow. It's no doubt about it. And so with that, uh, one, one of all the comments we've heard over the last two or three days, only once that uh, our guest speaker yesterday mentioned courage. Well, that's what we need to add to our repertoire. This organization has courage to take on the elephants. And we are taking the initiatives in education and health care to address those concerns of our, of our people. And I'm just so proud to be here. Thank you. Thank God. Thank everybody. Thank you so much. Go to Cab. <laughs> Gail, you started a conversation that I'm quite sure will continue to go on. But let me put it in this perspective. Our greatest glory is not in never falling, but in rising every time we fall. Confucius. Thank you again to all of our sponsors. Now to give our invocation is Reverend Dr. Derek J. Hughes of First Baptist Church of Piney Grove. Then please. Enjoy your breakfast. Again, good morning. Let us pray. Eternal God, we are grateful for your grace and mercy. We are grateful for life and the privilege to be able to serve mankind. We thank you now for this 100 men organization and how you've used these leaders to impact society. We pray now for your presence as we even now 
embark upon eating. We pray that it will be fit for our nourishment. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. We're going to make uh, three awards to our chapter of the year. And I'm going to ask you if you would just hold your applause until after all three chapters have been recognized. And then we can uh, 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 give them a round of applause for their accomplishments. Uh, our first chapter of the year award is in the area of leadership and education. And the winner is the 100 Black Men of Central Virginia for its African American Male Achievers Program. There are two very effective components of this overreaching program. The first is the MQ'd Summer Academy and the Scholar's Recognition. Both of these program components build self-confidence and self-determination in the participants. The MQ'd Summer Academy provides mentoring to middle school age black boys of the Albemarle County Public Schools. It's the first single gender single race program to be piloted in the school system. Mentors serve a daily role as daily role models, teachers and guest speakers during the summer and throughout the school year with special emphasis on the key subjects of science and math. The results have been absolutely outstanding. 90% of their program participants showed year-to-year -year growth in the standard, standardized test scores compared to 68% of non-participants and 65% of the MQ boards demonstrated a mastery of grade level content compared to 47% of the non-participants. Uh, and in the Scholars Recognition Program, it's also very impressive. It is directed to African American males in grades nine through 12 in that same school system. It is achieving its primary goals to recognize and promote academic success for these students and provide mentoring to them to enable them to mentor and serve as role models to elementary and middle school students. So over the past five years, 400 scholars, those achieving grade point average of 3.0 or higher, have been recognized through their annual breakfast. 64 seniors have been awarded $68,500 in scholarships over the last three years alone and attended 29 different colleges and universities. Five years ago, the average number of African-American students with a grade point average of 3.0 or higher in the school system was only 14%. Today, it's 20, risen to 23%. And many of these scholars are serving as role models and mentors to the MQ participants and serve as assistants in the academy and their summer academy. So please, uh, I'm going to ask the, the president from the Virginia chapter if he'll come forward. Our next chapter award is for leadership and mentoring. The winner of this award is the 100 Black Men of Jackson, Mississippi for their Senior Transition Program. This program, which has completed its third year, provides mentoring for graduating high school seniors in the Jackson Public Schools. 100 underserved students participate in monthly workshops that teach a variety of work readiness and life skills, including financial literacy, professional work behavior, social skills, job search, and college life preparation. The chapter members mentor the students, assisting them in achieving their educational and career goals, enhancing their self-confidence and social awareness, and developing their social skills. The 100 Black Men of Jackson Senior Transition Program has achieved outstanding results. 95% of all program participants continue their education beyond high school, whether it's through a trade school, community college, college or university, or in the military. And due to the success of this program, the expansion of the program is into more school systems as be is being discussed. So at this time, I would ask the president from the Jackson, Mississippi chapter if he'll also come forward and be recognized.
Our final chapter of the year award is for leadership in health and wellness. And this award goes to the 100 black men of London, England. The Chapters Health and Wellness Program is a community-wide program that impacts black men, women, and children in London by raising the awareness of, the, of pressing health and wellness issues, including nutrition and fitness, prostate cancer, diabetes, mental health, breast cancer, and sickle cell. In addition to distributing information on these issues through conferences, workshops, and through its website, email distribution and social media, the chapter sponsors sports days and walks that promote healthy lifestyles. The program is also delivered to the mentees of, every, of the chapter every two weeks, and mentors continually promote the virtues of healthy eating and active lifestyle to their mentees. In addition, a parent's component of the program delivers information to them on a bi-weekly basis and special events like Quality Time Sports Day for Fathers, Family Fun Day for the whole family, and Black Heroes Walk for the community expands to expand exposure within that community. Again, their results have been available to, to raise the level of awareness about health and wellness issues and how to live healthy lifestyles among the black community and young people in London. The response from the community has been so favorable that they now, uh, they, we know that lives are being changed and even saved based on the report that we have received. So at this time, would you also give a recognition to the 100 black men of London for their program in health and wellness. And we'll also uh, honor the president because I think their chapter's been competing. He's here? Perfect. I know he was competing earlier. <laughs> Let's give them a round of applause again for the work that they're doing in our local community. Good morning. My name is Jalen Lewis. Yesterday I was honored to be recognized as Mentee of the Year. Today is my honor to introduce to you Chairman of the 100 Black Men of America, Curly M. Dossman, Jr. Mr. Dossman began his term as chairman in 2012 after serving in various capacities, including vice chair of operations over his many years of serving the 100. When not volunteering with the 100, Mr. Dossman is vice president of community affairs for Georgia Pacific and president of Georgia Pacific Foundation, roles he had held for almost 20 years. He is a mainstay of the Atlanta philanthropic community known as a true servant leader. We don't have time for all of his accolades, but some to mention are Morehouse College Candle in the Dark Award, Big Brothers, Big Sisters Legacy Award, Atlanta Tribune Magazine's Men of the Year, Morehouse Entrepreneurship Innovative Creative Entrepreneur Award, and Who's Who in Black Atlanta's Most Influential African Americans list. Mr. Dossman is a graduate, graduate of Morehouse College, and he also earned a law degree from University, Washington University School of Law. He has been married to his lovely wife, Jennifer, for 26 years, and they have a son named Jonathan. Since Chairman Dossman was installed as the fifth chairman of the 100 Black Men of America, he has focused the 100 on the 100 as one mantra, which sets out strategic imperatives to help the organization to the next level. To hear about the State of the 100, please welcome Chairman Curly Dossman. Uh, 
Uh, thank you, Jalen, for that kind introduction. <laughs> you know, it's wonderful to see all of you here this morning and the many faces of the 100 at our 28th annual conference. It's always great to see some old friends, and especially the brothers in arms, our generous partners, and other stakeholders. And of course, the inspiring youth at these conferences like, like Mr. Lewis. And I think we should recognize him again as our mentee of the year. Jalen and I have things in common. We're both uh, native of Louisiana, so I'm proud to see that he's been the mentee this year uh, and have the opportunity, and I think he's also aspiring to go to Morehouse as well. Uh, I will make one correction, and my wife won't let me uh, sit well at the table. He said 26 years. He was referring to the 26 years, or maybe before I took, became chair of the organization. <laughs> but Jennifer and I have been married for 43 years. And, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, she's teasing me. It's actually 40. I just went, just added it on the same time. 40 years. And, and in, uh, on Tuesday, we will be boarding a ship for a good Mediterranean cruise to celebrate this wonderful accomplishment. <laughs> All right. Hey, as years is going over, that's what the 100 will do to you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right, this theme uh, for this year's conference, as you know, is education in an era of change, ensuring excellence for African-American youth. This reflects a nexus, a connection, or a link between the 100 black men of America and one of the most important issues of our time the disparity in quality education. And you are learning more about this and what can be done about it at this conference. And so the point I want to make here, and as you will hear and see later, is that the 100 is not only making a difference today in the lives of youth that we serve and in the communities where we live, but we are also well positioned to address the issue and help shape a solution. We have a great opportunity in front of us. We are paused for this opportunity because of the 50-year legacy of this organization in which real men, given real time, have labored in the fields. As Booker T. Washington said, nothing ever comes to one that is worth having except as a result of hard work and we have been working hard for the futures of our black youth. We are paused for the opportunity to do the visionary leadership, due to the visionary leadership of those men in New York City in 1963, and the stewardship of the leaders of this organization, including your executive team. We have an outstanding leadership team, and I'd like our current executive team to stand and be recognized. Gentlemen, would you please let be recognized. Michael, would you stand up as well? I um, appreciate it. We appreciate all that you do for the 100, and I certainly appreciate the support that you provide to me. When I became your chairman almost two years ago, I took the rings of an organization that had been well shepherded by strong presidents and chairmen over the previous 26 years. Some of those leaders are with us today, and I'd like them to stand and be recognized. Nathaniel Gostin, our second national president. <laughs> Chairman Emeritus, Thomas W. Deutsch, Jr. <laughs> and my predecessor, Chairman Emeritus, Albert E. Dyson, Jr., who's rising again this morning. <laughs> okay. During his last term as chairman, Al Dyson introduced the 100 as one as a way to unify and focus us as an international organization of more than 100 local chapters. 
So building on that initiative, I took that mantra and applied three strategic imperatives to it that will help to elevate us to the next level as an organization and take advantage of the opportunities that we have before us. As an organization, you have embraced this mantra and these imperatives, and it is great to see how we are rallying behind them as one. They are one mission, one cause, and one network. The outcomes we seek with our one mission, strategic imperative, is to unify our vision around a solidified organizational core. Our objectives are focused on aligning our entire organization with our mission and vision, bolstering the effectiveness and efficiency of our operations, strengthening our headquarters staff and function, and continuing the implementation of our strategic plan, which we adopted in 2009. Establishing a sound found financial foundation for long-term growth and deeper impact of our programs has been a key focus area. And we know that we needed to diversify our revenue streams for financial growth and stability, and we have made significant progress in this area. With the able assistance of our program and development staff, we have greatly advanced our goals in these areas. To deepen our engagement of private foundations, we have concentrated an effort to fund Project SOAR, which stands for Student Opportunities, Access, and Readiness. And it is our education platform to promote, to promote educational excellence in the communities we serve by our chapter network. So leveraging a planning grant we received from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Project SOAR will provide post-secondary education and career readiness training for our mentees and has considerable synergies with all that we do. To fund Project SOAR, we have secured already $1.64 million in grants through April of this year. At the same time, our development team has done a yeoman's job in maintaining and growing our traditional corporate base with one, another $1.5 million that's been raised also through the month of April. And to further diversify our revenue sources, our development team is working with Prudential to pilot a charitable giving program targeting individual donors in seven local, local chapters in the cities of Atlanta, Chicago, Miami, and St. Louis. We should begin to see results from these efforts in the next six months. Our financial focus has paid off. We're meeting the challenges of the economic downturn and have dramatically reduced the amount of the loan for our Atlanta headquarters building, and we actually expect to retire that debt in September of this year. Another area of emphasis on our one mission imperative is improving our operational effectiveness and efficiency. And under the leadership of our Vice Chair of Technology, Clint Walker, I'm sorry, Marvin, our committee chairman, Clint Walker, <laughs> we have accelerated our tech use of technology by implementing cloud computing and SharePoint and using the grant from Cisco to upgrade our communication system. During the transition, we were also able to lower our telecommunications costs. In addition, we have also fostered relationships with technology organizations that will increase our, further increase our efficiency and take advantage of technology solutions. For example, we're trying to move myself and our board members into the new age. And we have forced a new relationship with diligent board books and will begin using their platform for our executive committee meetings coming up in this September. So I'm giving them advance warning. They need to go talk to the young folks that they mentor and understand how to use this technology because it is coming and they're going to have to catch up real soon. <laughs> We're also implementing a new customer relationship management system, Salesforce, and as well as QuickBooks Enterprises for nonprofits for our accounting systems. And on a more mundane note, we also improved. This time, you know the billing bears your name. And it's been in our possession for a long time, and we had a storm that came through Atlanta, wore things out. 
but over the last year, we've improved our headquarters facility by adding new carpet, tile, and paint, and actually replacing the downstairs air conditioned unit. So I encourage you to come back to Atlanta and visit your local headquarters <laughs> and see the renovation. And I wanted to make sure that Tommy's name didn't just sit on the building that he couldn't be proud of. So we're excited about that. But in order to take advantage of the opportunities we have before us, we needed to update also our governance structure. And in the leadership of our chair emeritus, Al Dotson, and the response and commitment that you've given to us in our leadership summit in December, we approved a new governance structure. And at this conference, we are implementing a structure that will right-size our governing leadership and empowers the board of directors to become a policy-making body rather than simply a management entity. And I want to thank you for your support and thank you for the leadership that you gave to us, Al, in that effort. And I appreciate that working. And obviously, uh, you got some candidates coming, which has been a really interesting time this year. You know, not a Vernon. I guess that's why I gave you that award, so <laughs> we've not had much a lot of acrimony as we prepare for the elections uh, coming up in the next day and a half. Uh, but it enhances this new governance structure will also enhance the decision rights of your leadership. It provides leadership continuity, and it positions the 100 for the future, including improved fundraising effectiveness, but it also does something for you as local chapter presidents and members of those chapters. It frees up our chapter presidents to focus their time, their talents, and their resources for chapter management and for program execution. And that program execution is very critical to the future of where we are, and I'm gonna talk about that a little bit later in, this, in, this, uh, in my statements. But while these still are being uh, our primary audience for our annual leadership summits, for capacity building, and also for chapter development. So we look forward to utilizing this new structure to help take us to the next level as an organization. And that next level must involve a deepening of our impact for our one cause, which is mentoring the 100 way across a lifetime. And that impact though, it must be holistic, it must be sustainable, and it must be verifiable. <coughs> We know that we are making a difference in the lives of the youth that we serve. We have known that for 50 years. You only have to look at the youth who are at this conference and to hear their testimonials. We have taken that proven legacy and built on it by continuing to improve the delivery of our value proposition. And that is mentoring underserved youth across a lifetime and providing educational support to empower and enable our mentees to reach their full potential as the world's largest network of black male mentors. To promote a consistent and sustainable impact, we have to standardize our mentoring model and, and we offered an online training to all of our mentors. Again, I wanna congratulate you for your support and your response to this call. To date, 100% of our executive committee and headquarters staff have completed this training. 83% of our chapter presidents and 62% of our chapter membership have completed the training. And while we have a little ways to go, it is gratifying that we have more than doubled the number of mentors trained over the past 12 months. And our goal is to have 100% of our chapter presidents and 100% of our membership trained by next year's conference in Houston. So give yourselves a hand for the progress we've made already and for the progress that you're gonna make going forward. We've also launched an innovative mentee curriculum called Success Academy in eight beta test chapters. This virtual mentoring training, which was introduced at last year's conference, teaches mentees the importance and benefits of embracing mindsets and developing habits that are conducive to lifelong success. We are collecting data from these tests and we will complete our analysis after this conference. But preliminary results are very promising and suggest, and suggest 
that we'll have a chapter-wide rollout in the very immediate future. We applauded earlier this year when President Barack Obama announced his My Brother's Keepers initiative, which promises to serve as a catalyst to generate collaborations to address the plight of this nation's black and Latino boys. The initiative has a clear mentoring component, and we are definitely exploring ways that we can be a part of that. The My Brother's Keeper announcement followed the establishment of the White House Initiative on Educational Excellence for African Americans, for which Al Dotson was selected as a member of the President's Commission under this initiative. Congratulations, Chairman Dotson, for this vital assignment. And we look forward to you bringing home the bacon, sir. <laughs> a key component of our education focus is advocating for educational excellence, including high-performing schools. This includes the establishment of charter public schools by some chapters when the local school system has failed to produce satisfactory results for African-American children. And recently, we added our voice to the important national learning standards known as Common Core by standing with the Better Standards for a Better Co Georgia Coalition at a rally at the Georgia State Capitol and helping to defeat a bill that would have dismantled education standards in the state. Under our new Education Committee Chairman, Dr. Thomas Parham, we launched a new vision for our education priority area at the Leadership Summit last December. We are re-engaging a triangle of success that has historically proven to achieve educational achievement in African-American communities. And that triangle, as you heard in the workshops and the town hall yesterday, consists of the collaboration of the home, the school, and the community, including our churches. And this conference and its agenda are a part of that vision. It is our obligation to use our position of credible leadership to help narrow the gap in the availability and the delivery of quality education in this country and in our local communities. So our advocacy goals are to broaden the education reform awareness and policy knowledge among the members of the 100, to support reform efforts in traditional schools, to elevate key learnings of high-performing charter schools, to build a broad coalition of 100 black men and collaborative partners as champions and evangelists for high-performing schools, whether they're traditional or charter, public charter. I want to make that clear. Equip key 100 black men and other select members of targeted African-American partnership organizations to either run for school board or serve on these high-performing public charter boards. In our Four for the Future program area of health and wellness, we continued our emphasis on prostate health education by partnering with the Prostate Health Education Network to increase awareness and education about this disease and its prevention to African-American males who are the, at the highest risk for prostate cancer. When we left New Orleans last year, our seven Louisiana chapters participated in a pilot with the Louisiana Public Health Institute's tobacco-free program to change community norms and perceptions about tobacco use and health dangers. In our economic empowerment program area, we have expanded our pilot funded by Wells Fargo called Pathways to Success to a total of seven chapters. And we are very excited about this program, which fosters high school and college students' interests in entrepreneurship and corporate careers. We boasted our financial literacy offerings to our youth by adding a partnership with Ally Financial and promoting Wells Fargo's hands-on banking program to middle and high school students, and of course, continuing the longtime State Farm Dollars and Cents Youth Investment Program, which culminates in a competition here later this afternoon. So remember when I said that our cause must be holistic, it must be sustainable, and it must be verifiable. In the past, Mentoring the 100 Way Across a Lifetime has captured 
the first two of those attributes. There is no doubt that anecdotally, we are making a difference in the lives of the youth we serve. But to take this organization to the next level, we need to measure that impact. We involve metrics-based standards for uniformity and consistency so that we can report our impact as the 100 as one. So therefore, we will be asking the chapters and our members to track certain activities for impact measurement and communications. We'll be asking you to use the tools, to you only use the tools that we're providing you to capture and to share this information. This will allow us to fully demonstrate the collective results of our one cause. We continue to expand our reach under our 101 network imperative to impact youth across the lifetime. We put additional emphasis on our Collegiate 100 program and added four new chapters this year. Our membership in our Collegiate chapter is now more than 1,600 students. And we have launched our first Emerging 100 chapter in Atlanta, which provides a way to keep young men engaged with the 100 who have graduated from college and a Collegiate 100 chapter but are too young to join some of our local chapters. And we call this the circle of mentorship. It's an example of how many of our mentees are paying back and paying forward by serving as mentors themselves. In order to learn more about this circle of mentorship, I encourage you to read our 2013 annual report. You receive those at the meeting. You should have copies as well. And uh, I think you will find it very interesting, and I want to commend the staff and others for the creative way in which they built the new uh, annual report. I hope you find that to be uh, beneficial to you as well. And for them, some of those of you with technology challenge, that little thing that's hanging on the bot, it's actually a jump drive. <laughs> and it has the annual report connected to it as well. But another crucial component of our One Network imperative is to expand our partnerships and our co collaborations. This is crucial to our future as we know that the needs of our youth require a collaborative approach. No organization can meet all these needs by themselves. And I've already mentioned some of these partnerships, but I just want to call out a few more before I close. New to our network is Cox Enterprises, which will help us to develop and implement a process for connecting our Collegiate 100 members to internship and employment opportunities in Cox Business Unit. Also new this year is a three-year collegiate 100 internship program with Wells Fargo, which is aimed at college sophomores who are interested in careers in the financial industry. Likewise, our partnership with En-ROADS continues to provide soft skills training and opportunities for internships for our collegiate 100 students as well as the partnerships we have with the U.S. Marine Corps, which is investing in the Collegiate 100 program as well. All of these things we have tried to accomplish over the years as we continue to move forward and with your support and with your help. But as I've said on many times, it's not what your national office has done in preparing the work really, where the rubber meets the roads is at the local chapter, where you're doing the work and where you put your hands on these students. And so with that, I'd like you to uh, let me visualize by watching your work through a video of the work of the 100. Please roll the video. Let us march on to victory. It's 100 Black Men of America has a long history of putting mentoring and education on the front line. We have to stop saying I've defied the statistic and just change the statistic. Thank you, 100 Black Men of America, for allowing me this life-changing experience. Well, I think we've seen a number of examples of where kids' lives have been transformed and changed and new trajectories have been placed in their lifestyle. The 100 Black Men of America Incorporated boasts a noted legacy of saving and transforming lives through mentoring, such as that of Randell Patterson, who in 2008, at the age of 13, faced adult consequences for a juvenile prank. 
each of us with three counts apiece of first, second, and third degree assault plus malicious destruction of property on each. So nine felony counts apiece. The offense, playing with BB guns outside a neighbor's house. The result, the Maryland teen and a friend stood before a judge with the rest of their lives possibly changed forever. I totally feared that they would give me the maximum penalty, give me some jail time. That was the one thing that I totally will regret is going to jail because I know from that you really can't recover. Or it would be three times as hard to recover if you did. Having witnessed the positive effects of the work of the 100, the prosecutor had a different option in mind. He said, I have two young men. I need your help to convince the judge to, in lieu of sentencing them or putting them through the system, to put them on probation and force them to come to your program. I thought they were going to yell at me and stuff like that, but they really didn't do that. It was a wake-up call. That's definitely what it was. Like, you get there and they put you right on the spot. Okay, stand up there, go. Who are you? That wake-up call for Randale turned a possible life sentence of hardship into a sentence of lifelong mentorship and commitment from the members of the 100 Black Men of Greater Washington, D.C. Incorporated. The value proposition of our Mentoring Across a Lifetime platform is that it allows us to offer unique support to our mentees no matter what stage of the continuum they're on. Fast forward, that same young man stayed involved in our program for the next several years, ended up getting a full ride to Morehouse. He's in his first year. One of the conditions of his scholarship was the fact that he had to maintain a certain grade point average. So he finished his first semester, and I got a call during the Christmas break. And he said, Mr. Dickerson, um, I have a problem. I said, what's your problem? He said, well, I got a 2.85, and I'm required to maintain a 3.0. In a different bind, but also possibly life-changing, Randale again reached out to the same mentors with whom he had grown accustomed to leaning on for support and advice for the past six years of his life. I picked up the phone and I called Marvin Dickerson, who I had met and had, you know, gotten to know through the 100 Black Men and the Saturday Leadership Academy. And he was there for me. Within the week, Randale and his mentor were on campus at Morehouse, meeting with the Morehouse president and financial aid office. Again, the 100 was there to ensure Randell's life remained on the right path. That's what the 100 does. We engage, we use our sphere of influence, we use our access, but more importantly, we use our life experiences to pass on to these young people. With 10,000 mentors serving communities, what the 100 does is stand in the gap standing up for youth. When we work with young kids in elementary school or whether we're working with them in middle school or at the high school and even post-college, they know that there is a, a network and there's a level of support that's there for them. The biggest part of mentorship is the willingness to share and mentor uh, with a mentee uh, gives them a total advantage because there's nothing that they're going to run into that you probably already have, have conquered. And by advising them or mentoring them, you can lead them away from those distractions and keep them back on track. That's what it's all about. And that's why we love For For The Future. When you look at it and you go in and you say, we're talking about economic empowerment, we're talking about education, we're talking about health and wellness, and the umbrella of it all is mentoring, which is led by leaders of an organization that will stand up every day and give their all in all for children with mentorship as its mission since 1963, the 100 channels its efforts, resources, and influence throughout its four for the future programmatic initiatives, including education, a focal point aimed at building confidence, creating cultural awareness, and fostering academic leadership. We expose them to opportunities. We expose them to an environment beyond the borderlines that they were growing up in. 
Part of ensuring access to quality education throughout the 100s network includes assessing and addressing the needs in each community through Saturday academies, partnerships with local school systems, and in some cases, even operating schools to best meet the needs of youth served by the 100. They always want to use the term at risk. Uh, which is a negative connotation to me to describe a young person. We, we would like to say they're just uh, going through life challenges as any young person goes through. Uh, so we have to continue to try to uh, just motivate them that even when they make mistakes that we're still going to be there for them. I remember watching a group of young people and, and they were very, you could tell they were very smart, but they were very shy. And I watched them grow over four years of involvement in, in a program, a robotics program with 100 Black Men of America, and, and saw them blossom to where, from being very introverted, they were doing interviews on CNN, and that's the kind of difference. That's the kind of difference that, that involvement could make. Without the support of 100 Black Men of London, I wouldn't be as confident. I can't thank you enough. I have had the opportunity uh, as a National Scholarship Chairman to personally see where we've been able to help uh, so many of our youth uh, to be successful. I mean, sometimes we um, have the opportunity to help those that really wouldn't have had any other chance. Part of the mentoring continuum is ensuring that mentees who have graduated from high school, like Randell, still have guidance, support, and mentorship. The whole focus now with the collegiates is really you know, developing their soft skills, their leadership skills. So we gotta make sure from an education standpoint that our young people are ready, that they're ready for the interviewing process, that they have the skills to write a good resume, that they have the interviewing and uh, skills that they need. While the work of the 100 spans 50 years of successful mentorship, that mission of mentoring has recently received national attention. In July 2012, uh, President Obama signed an executive order that created the White House Initiative for Educational Excellence for African Americans. And I've had the honor of serving, as many of you know, uh, with 100 black men uh, in a many different capacities. And I've watched what we have done as a group in the educational field. Uh, the president has recognized that work and agreed to appoint me to his commission uh, that will focus on expanding educational opportunities and educational outcomes for African Americans as we look forward into the near future. When I think about how the hundreds role has grown, it has grown over the years from being an entity that not only provides educational initiatives and support for our children, but also has become an arm of social advocacy so that we are advocating to school systems to create quality instruction. We're advocating to government agencies right, to provide funding and support. We are advocating to um, political entities who are creating the policies that both facilitate and inhibit the educational progress of our youth in school. So the social advocacy role that the 100 plays, I think, is very, very important. If I look out at a group of kids, I should never have to say, I forgot you. And that, that, that's truly the message. Uh, so many of our kids have been forgotten. So when you hear reports that black men aren't involved in their communities, I want them to remember or look us up, because we are involved in communities 365 days a year. And we've been doing it for 50 years, and we'll continue to do it for the next 50 years. It's also very uh, rewarding for us when you see kids who have come from uh, very tough situations to rise above those situations and again to soar the new heights. And that is the mission, the purpose, the worth, and the sustained impact born through the work of the 100 Black Men of America Incorporated. I am happy to report truthfully and humbly that I am not a statistic. I am Randall Patterson young black male. I feel like my future without the 100 black men would have been fairly dark and like dreary, you know, to put it mildly. So thanks to the 100.
with all of the members, President of the 100, would you please stand? Members of the 100, please stand. What you just saw and just witnessed is only a snippet of the work that these men, their other uh, colleagues and their volunteers in their local communities are doing across this country and across the world. And like Grindel, I just want to say my personal thanks to you for your work and your work and your effort because you are what really is what makes the 100 kick. And I want to personally thank you again for all that you do for the 100 Black Men of America. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. This concludes my remarks.